So now we come to Friday, April 3rd, AD 33. The trials of Jesus begun in the early morning hours, begin with the Jews, and they involve a brief appearance from Herod Antipas. But ultimately, the decision under God must rest with the Roman governor Pontius Pilate. A crucifixion, of course, was not a punishment invented only for Jesus, so it'll be helpful for us to learn a little bit of the history behind this barbaric form of torture in Roman times. If the disciples then could have heard that we now refer to this as Good Friday, they undoubtedly would have been perplexed, perhaps even offended, due to the suffering, shame, and humiliation that Christ endured. But while it's easy for us to focus only upon Christ's sufferings, for those of us with eyes to see, there's also glory to be found in this most important of days in salvation history. Well, now we're up to the first Good Friday, and actually the action begins just before dawn when the Sanhedrin has to convene one last time in order to endorse what they had decided the night before, that Jesus should die. Because according to Jewish law, you cannot sentence a man to death in a night session. So this is why Luke carefully tells us that the Sanhedrin met on Friday morning and they simply endorsed what they had done the night before at the Caiaphas hearing, and that is Jesus must die. They learned the process of crucifixion from indeed uh, the Persians. Uh, They crucified some of their admirals after they lost the first naval battle to the Romans in the first Punic War uh, in the third century BC and uh, then used it in Rome only for extreme uh, criminals. Those who were not Roman citizens could be crucified for serious crime. The whole idea is, look what this poor miscreant is suffering. Don't do what he did, or you're gonna get hung up on the cross the same way. And therefore, it is a way of preventing further crime, they thought, in addition to giving the the, uh, miscreant a very horrible way to die. When we look at the the way the Gospels, the different Gospels, present Jesus' suffering at the cross, Matthew, Mark, and Luke tend to focus more on the humiliation that Jesus endured and on the physical pain that he endured. Uh, while John, probably writing last, presents the cross more as a station uh, back to the glory that Jesus had before the world began. It's not so much that he minimizes the physical suffering that Jesus endured, but he shows that the spiritual reality of, of glory being brought to the Father even at the cross overrides any physical suffering that he may have had to endure. And of course, the writer to the Hebrews as well says that Jesus endured the cross for the joy set before him. So you see in the, in the biblical material uh, this emphasis that uh, the suffering was a necessary pathway to eternal glory.